Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for today's prayer, worship, and the Word. Uh, let us read from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, and we'll open up with a prayer. He paid with Christ's sacred blood. You know, He died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. Lord, we thank You, Lord God. Lord, that You provided the way for us to be reconciled with You. You provided the way for us to be to have a relationship with you. You provided a way for us, Lord God, to be able to have a blessed life, Lord God, to be rescued from a useless life, to a life that makes a difference, not just in this world, but even in eternity, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your sacrifice that forgave us our sins and rescued us from sin. Thank you, Lord God, for the joys that we can live with and have, Lord God, even in this life, because of your sacrifice. We are forever grateful to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us worship God right now. In the midst of the battle, I put my trust in you When darkness overwhelms me I will look to you When enemies surround me and sorrow fill my heart A gentle voice reminds me will never now I worship, now I declare Jesus, you want it all. You reign forever, you reign forever, holy and glorious. You reign forever. Fear is defeated. I know you are with me. Now I worship. Now I declare, Jesus, you want it all. You reign forever. Chose to love someone. Th 
thank you, Lord God, for this time you've given us to look into your word. Continue to transform our hearts, transform our lives, Lord, that we would bear your image, especially in a world that doesn't know what to do, especially in a world that's looking for multiple solutions for the problems that are overwhelming them. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in 1 Peter chapter 1. We're in part 2 of our holiness. Uh, look into holiness. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 17. You, I'm reading from the Message Bible. It says, you call out to God for help and He helps. He is a good father that way. But don't forget, He is also a responsible father and won't let you get by with sloppy living. Your life is a journey. You must travel with deep consciousness, with a deep consciousness of God. It, is a, it costs God plenty to get you out of that dead, empty, headed life you grew up in. Verse 19, he paid with Christ's sacred blood. You know, he, did, he died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. And this was not, not an afterthought, even though it was... It has only lately at the end of the ages become public knowledge. God always knew he was going to do this for you. Verse 21, it's because of the sacrificed Messiah whom God then raised from the dead and glorified that you trust God, that you know you have a future in God. 1 Peter was an epistle commissioned by the Apostle Paul. It was written by his co-worker uh, Silas or Silvana, some other would say. Uh, this was most likely ri written in Rome and was a circular letter. It was meant to go around. It was meant for those who, who were uh, of the elect or the chosen of God or the people of God already, those who are in Christ. Specifically, it was sent out to the believers who were scattered in the churches in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. These were exiled believers. Hence, they were called aliens. You see those terms in, if you read 1 Peter. Aliens, sojourners, migrants. They were facing hostility and persecution and suffering. This was written mainly to non-Jewish believers. One of the main things you find, especially in the beginning of 1 Peter, is the term living hope or the topic of living hope. Because the question is then, how do exiles, how do persecuted people, how do foreigners in a foreign land go into a land that they don't want to go to, but were forced to go there, uh, people who are struggling with hopelessness, how do you find living hope? From our text we read, uh, earlier, uh, the Message Bible, it, it puts it this way. But don't forget, talking about our Father, our God, He also is a responsible Father and He won't let you get by with sloppy living. Then He further says, It costs God plenty to get you out of the dead end, empty-headed life you grew up in. He is talking to a hopeless, persecuted, rejected people. But he's telling them, God will not let you tolerate. God will not let you linger on in sloppy living. He's, you see, many times when we're desperate, many times when, we're, when life is difficult, many times when we're suffering, we just give in to the hopelessness. We just give in to what's there and, uh, and nothing to live for. And we, we just let go of character. We let go of our emotions. And sometimes life can be a bigger mess. Here we find in the scripture, God won't let you go on living in, a, in sloppy living. So how do we get out of sloppy living? How do we, uh, from a place of suffering, from a place of trial, from a place of persecution, how do we live in living hope? How do we get out of hopeless living? In a sense, this is how we should live as 1 Peter enumerates before us, especially in a difficult, confusing, and unjust world. And the first thing I want us to, to see is in verse 18. It says, Your life is a journey you must travel with, deep, with a deep consciousness of God. 
Nothing about that. He's talking to hopeless people. He's talking to exiles. He's talking to people who are, who are in pain and are suffering. And he says, you must live life with a consciousness of God's presence. He was telling them, God did not abandon you. God has not left you. God is here. God is with you, no matter your circumstances, no matter your trials, no matter your hopelessness. God is with you. His purpose for you has not changed. His love for you has not abandoned you or left you. His love for you is there. His graciousness is still covering you. You must live Life with a consciousness of God's presence. Do not forget this. The question is, do you see it? Can you perceive it? So many times in life, we equate God's presence with God's blessings. When life is difficult, when the trials come one after the other, when pain is a, is a constant companion, when suffering is a reality we face every day of our lives, our biggest question is, where are you, God? Why did you forsake me? Why did you leave, leave me? But the psalmist here, uh, or the, the uh, first Peter, or Peter is saying here, God is with you. He's there. Can you perceive it? Can you see it? God is always with us in the blessed times and in the difficult times. And friends, this last two years, the struggle, the difficulty, the loss, the pain, God has not abandoned you. God's heart has not changed towards you. God's love is still the same. God's grace still covers you. And God's purpose will still be established in your life. I hope and I pray that we find and that we sense and we have a consciousness of God's presence always with us. The second part of verse 18, it says, It cost God plenty to get you out of that dead end, empty-headed life you grew up in. He paid with Christ's sacred blood, you know. He died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. In our world today, value many times is determined by money. That's why we shockingly see people change. All of a sudden, their seeming values are thrown out of the window because of the exchange of finance or money that's coming their way. Their so-called values are changed and thrown overnight sometimes. Somehow, these changes always involve money. A chance to learn a lot, uh, to earn a lot, many, a lot more times or uh, uh, sometimes, uh, many times cannot be ignored. Also because of this, because we value money so much, we value earning it, we value accumulating it so much, that in turn puts value or dictates our own value. How much can we, uh, how do you say, it? how much can we add value to others? How much can we add value to work? How much can we add value to the business? In other words, how much can we earn for the sake of others? How much profit can we bring? In other words, our performance is the gauge of our value. But here in this verse, we see the real sense, in a real sense, a defeated people, exiled, rejected, persecuted, hopeless, but we see that their present situation did not change their value. In fact, Peter is reminding them in the midst of their trials and their pain. Peter is reminding them, remember, Christ paid for you, for your lives. The Word of God declares their real value. It costs Christ everything to get a hold of your life. You see through truths that it establish and dictate your real value. Your relationship with Christ is the ultimate determinant of your value. Have you noticed that real value is not determined by money? 
But values, largely, most of the time, is determined by relationships. Both rich and poor, you'll hear this from their mouths. Ah, pera lang yan. That's just money. But you rarely hear rich or poor say, Oh, never mind, that's just my wife. Oh, that, 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 that's of no consequence. Oh, that's no value. That's just my child. Or that's just my father. Or that's just my mother. In fact, isn't it that the greatest loss we experience in life is really a loss of relationship? A loss of a loved relationship. The cross of Christ determined your value. Friends, you are not expensive. Yep. Peter was telling in us, it was showing the exile, showing the suffering. You are not expensive. You are priceless. Why? Because Jesus paid the price for your life. Your real value will outlive this world. God's relationship you will, with you will go on for eternity. What an amazing thing. Your value is not determined what happens by what happens in our world. Your value is, is so much, it's priceless, that it actually crosses to eternity. In fact, I believe the most satisfying, most amazing and most incredible, incredible time we will have with God will be in eternity. Verse 20. And this was no afterthought, even though, even though it has only lately at the end of the ages become public knowledge, God always knew he was going to do this for you. I couldn't get over that. God always knew he was going to do this for you. God knew He was going to do this for you, even though He knew that you were going to fail, that they were going to fail, that they were going to turn their back against God, that they were going to sin, that they were going to rebel against God. Yet God knew all of that, but He also knew something that He's making known in the Scripture, that He always knew that He would pay the price to get you reconciled with God. That He would always do this, no matter what your life is. Offer His life for your sake and for our sake. This has always been God's heart. From the very beginning of time, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and even today, it is still God's heart. God did not discover your value recently because of something great you did, but He determined your value before the beginning of time. Before you could do anything else, your value was already established by God. We have been looking at holiness, and sure, holiness does imply a certain way of living. It does imply a certain standard to live up to. But the truth we forget many times is that Holy, we are holy not necessarily because of the moral standards we have, we have embraced or achieved. We are holy because God separated us. God determined you and I and the world, uh, whoever responds, everybody who is in Christ is set aside for His purpose. That makes you holy. That makes you holy. God considers us different, special, and honorable. We have been chosen for His honorable use. You have been separated for His honorable use. You have been chosen to bring Him honor. You have been separated, given the privilege and the honor of being able to honor God. We have been chosen to be His children, His servants, His ambassadors, His representatives and many times his voice his hands his heart and his presence to one another and to a world that doesn't know him now that's amazingly inspiring and i hope it motivates you holy living is simply living for god 
Let's close with this. Verse 21. It is because of this sacrificed Messiah whom God then raised from the dead and glorified that you trust God, that you know you have a future in God. Friends, all we have is amazing life. All we can have an amazing future. And all that will be in eternity is all because of our Lord Jesus Christ. All this is through Jesus our Lord. All this is with Jesus our Lord. Now live out the special, the special, honorable, holy life Jesus provided for all of us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for everything. Lord, what an amazing, blessed life you've given us. Lord, we come to you right now in gratitude, in thankfulness, grateful, with our hearts crying out to worship you. In Jesus' name, let us worship God again. You reign forever, God. We declare your reign. Oh. When I was so lost, you chose to love someone. we go, let me declare this blessing over all of us again. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.